He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Over the previous two tutorials, we covered seven out of the eight classes of minerals. That leaves just one more, and it's the most important class, including the majority of the minerals in Earth's crust and upper mantle. We are talking about silicates. All silicates are made of the same building block, the silica tetrahedron, which is simply a silicate, or SiO4-4- anion. The structure of the silica tetrahedra is a central silicon atom that is bonded to four oxygen atoms. You can think of it as a pyramid with a silicon atom in the center and an oxygen at each corner. Silicate minerals are divided into subclasses based on their arrangement and linkage of silica tetrahedra, which can range from a single isolated tetrahedron bonded to a metal to a complex three-dimensional framework of silica tetrahedra. The ability of silica tetrahedra to link together, or polymerize, to form a diverse array of intricate structures stems from its unique mesodemic bonding, where each of the oxygen anions has one of its two valence charges satisfied by bonding with its tetrahedron's central silicon atom, thus leaving a remaining charge of negative one at each corner of the tetrahedron that is available for bonding. Because of this, a given silica tetrahedron can bond with up to four other silica tetrahedra, or none at all. The structural complexity of the silicate minerals increases with the degree of polymerization, and even though quartz, or SiO2, is about as simple as it gets chemically, it is structurally very complex with its three-dimensional framework of silica tetrahedra. We will first discuss the silicates that do not polymerize at all, the orthosilicates. Orthosilicates, also called nesosilicates, are the simplest subclass of silicates, as the silica tetrahedra are not polymerized, meaning there is no sharing of oxygen atoms between silica tetrahedra. Instead, the silica tetrahedra are linked by bonding with cations like magnesium, iron, calcium, and aluminum. Unlike silicon, which bonds to four oxygen anions to form tetrahedra, larger cations like magnesium and iron bond or coordinate with six oxygen anions to form octahedra. Moreover, even larger cations like the alkali metals and calcium coordinate with eight or more oxygen atoms depending on the mineral structure. Knowing that the coordination of an ion is dependent on its radius, it is easy to predict which atoms can substitute for others in a crystal's lattice. This brings us to the most common type of orthosilicate minerals, olivine. Olivine has two octahedral sites that contain medium-sized divalent cations, in addition to its tetrahedral silicon. In a typical olivine, the octahedral sites contain a mixture of magnesium and ferrous iron, with more magnesium than iron. Geologists call this mixing of different ions on a crystallographic site, solid solution. In the previous tutorial, we discussed end members, which are minerals that represent the chemical extremes of a group. In the olivine group, Phaolite, or Fe2SiO4, is the iron end member, and Forsterite, or Mg2SiO4, is the magnesium end member, with complete solid solution existing between them. Another important group of orthosilicates is garnet, which comes in a wide variety of compositions with extensive solid solution. Its base formula is X3Y2SiO4-3 where the X site is an eightfold site that can be occupied by calcium, magnesium, ferrous iron, and manganese. And the Y site is a sixfold site that typically contains aluminum and ferric iron. The last group of orthosilicates we will discuss are the aluminosilicates, which have a chemical formula of Al2SiO5. Unlike the others, the minerals in this group all have the exact same formula. Where they differ is their crystal structure. Minerals with the same formula but different structures are called polymorphs, with the temperature and pressure of formation influencing which polymorph crystallizes. For the aluminosilicates, kyanite is the high pressure phase, silimonite is the high temperature phase, 
and andalusite is the low temperature, low pressure phase. Next are the disilicates, also called sorosilicates, which are composed of pairs of silica tetrahedra that share one oxygen atom and have the basic structural unit Si2O7-6-. Due to its similarity in size and charge with the silicon cation, aluminum sometimes substitutes in, forming aluminum tetrahedra. When aluminum, which has a charge of 3 plus, substitutes for silicon, which has a charge of 4 plus, the mineral must somehow balance out this gained negative charge. This can be accomplished by picking up a hydrogen ion or substituting a lower charged cation, like sodium, for a higher charged one, like calcium. The most common sorosilicates are in the epidote group, which contain the minerals zoocyte, epidote, and alanite. These minerals are chemically complex, with three octahedral sites, typically containing aluminum and ferric iron, and a distorted 7 to 11 fold site that contains larger cations like calcium. The mineral alanite is known for taking up rare earth elements like yttrium and cerium into its structure, where they substitute for calcium in the large cation site, making it a valuable ore material. Ring silicates, also called cyclosilicates, are composed of silica tetrahedra that share two oxygen atoms and have a silicon to oxygen ratio of 1 to 3. Their name is derived from their structure, which forms rings of six silica tetrahedra stacked atop one another. They are a small group with only a handful of commonly occurring minerals, including the popular gemstones beryl and tourmaline, with beryl also being an important ore of beryllium. Let's consider the structure of beryl, which has the chemical formula Al2Be3Si6O18. Between its stacked six-membered rings of silica tetrahedra are sheets of laterally linked 12-membered rings composed of alternating aluminum octahedra and beryllium tetrahedra that cross-link the rings of silica tetrahedra. This creates an intricate three-dimensional framework like that of a framework silicate, a group we will discuss in the next tutorial. The stacked rings of tetrahedra create long cylindrical channels that are commonly filled with large cations, like sodium, potassium, and cesium, which creates a net positive charge that must be balanced. This is achieved by substituting divalent cations, like chromium and ferrous iron, for aluminum in the octahedral site. The gemstones emerald and aquamarine are varieties of beryl, containing trace amounts of chromium and iron, respectively, which are responsible for their color. That covers three of the subclasses of silicates, but there are several more, so let's move forward and check out the rest. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com. Yeah.